Welcome to Synthesize This. In this episode, we're going to be synthesizing bagpipes on the Behringer DeepMind 12. Let's get started. So as usual, the first thing we want to do is initialize a basic patch. So we hold program, hit compare. That initializes the patch. The other thing we want to do is make sure that all the sliders we see here are what we're going to be hearing. So we hold program and then we hit write, which will revert to panel. So now we have a basic initialized patch. All right, so to create backpipes, uh, basically we're trying to simulate different components. So there's the droning sound that you typically hear, which is the single note that resonates throughout the playing. And then there's the melody part, which is higher up. So in order to accurately simulate a backpipe, there's sort of three different components that we're gonna have to get right. One is the core basic sound, so the tone of the sound. The other is effects. And lastly, it's the way we play it. So in order to play convincing bagpipes, you need to remember to drone a single note at a single pitch and then play a couple octaves higher when you play your melody. And the key thing about bagpipes is they're very thin and nasally and kind of wobbly in pitch. So we're going to utilize a few different aspects to create that kind of rich chorusy sound and create those slight fluctuations in pitch. All right, so enough theory, let's get right into it. We're gonna leave the LFOs as is for now. I'm not gonna touch the ARP or sequencer for this patch, so we're gonna ignore this section for now. So let's jump into oscillator one and two. I'm gonna make sure both sawtooth and the square wave are engaged. And I'm gonna move the pulse of my square wave to make it as thin as possible. And that'll give us that pinchy nasally sound which we want for our bagpipes. So the other thing I'm going to do is engage oscillator 2 and make it an octave higher. And that'll give us that typical sound. So you hear that bass frequency and that higher, like whiny, high pitch frequency as well. And so I'm going to bring up oscillator 2 here. Right now they're in unison. So I'm going to crank the pitch high up. And I'm also going to go into the edit settings of oscillator two here, and I'm gonna make it four foot, which will give us an octave higher. And I'm gonna jump out of that. I'm also gonna engage uh, syncing here, and that'll in accentuate that nasally sound and give us more tonal control with the pitch uh, control here. And we'll be utilizing these two controls later to fine tune the type of backpipes we want. And this will give you kind of different flavors. So I'm going to leave it like this for now. And we'll go back and tweak it later. So I think we're good with the oscillators. So let's jump over here. So the filter is not really involved in this patch because we really want that bright nasally sound. So we don't actually want to filter it much. but. We do want a little bit of character, so I'm going to bring up the resonance and slightly close the filter. But you're not actually going to really hear the filter in this patch. So we're going to jump over to the envelopes here, and I'm going to create a very organ-like uh, shape for my VCA envelope, meaning I want an instant attack and my sustain and decay all the way up and no release. So it's basically a gated sound. As I control the keyboard, the volume goes either instantly up or down. And I'm gonna create a bass slightly more subtle VCF shape and increase the envelope's contribution to the frequency. But again, this is extremely subtle because I filter is almost all the way open and there's full contribution of the envelope. I'm gonna leave the VCA to the max and engage a little bit of LFO and keyboard contribution to the cutoff frequency. But again, it's almost all the way up here, so you're barely gonna hear that part. It's just gonna add a little bit of subtle movement. The other main thing we wanna do is 
Right now our sound is kind of weak, so we want to fatten it up a little bit. And since we only have two oscillators, there's only so much we can do here. But the other technique you can do is, since we have 12 voices on the synth, you can actually change the allocation. So instead of having 12 individual voices, you can choose to stack a few of them in unison. So what we're going to do is go to the poly edit menu here. And up here you have polyphony set to poly now, which is 12 notes separated for 12 keys. But we can choose different kinds of unisons here. So we're going to choose unison 4. And what that's going to do is every note will actually have four voices stacked on top of each other. Of course, that's going to reduce our um, polyphony here. So we're only going to be able to play three notes at a time. But that's fine because in a backpipe, that's basically all you need. You have one droning sound. And then we'll have two note voices free so we can do kind of little uh, legato glides which you'll see later is useful to create the illusion of the playing of a bagpipe. So now if I play it, it's much thicker. And that gives us that thick, meaty sound that we want. I'm going to leave priority to last, uh, which is useful here. I'm also going to engage some unison detune, which will detune the four voices apart. So I'm going to actually set this pretty high. And already you can hear it's more of a bagpipe-ish sound because it's kind of drifty and chorusy and out of tune. You don't want to exaggerate it, of course, but you want to find a sweet spot so it's not too dry and, and kind of clinical, but a little more organic. So that sounds pretty good. Uh, and then we can increase the oscillator drift as well. So again, bagpipes are sort of imperfect. They're kind of, think of it as a very heavy like drone sound. So you want sl slight kind of evolution and movement uh, of the sound over time, which means either the frequency of the oscillators here would drift or the timbre as well. So we can assign something to modulate the tone mod and the pitch, which in this case are our main timbre controls. And again, the key is to make it subtle, so you don't want something that exaggerates it like this, which would break the illusion of the bagpipes. All right, so I think we have a pretty decent template for sound now. So the other thing we're going to do is move on to the effects section here. So I'm going to change my routing so that 1 and 2 are serial, and then we split off into 3 and 4 here. So the first effect, I'm going to choose the rack amp, which is an amplifier simulation. The second one, I'm going to choose a flanger, but we can change it to a chorus later. We just want an effect that is that will kind of morph the sound and thicken it up. And so, yeah, in general, what we want with bagpipes is kind of a bright nasally sound but also like a chorus effect so the, the frequencies of the oscillators are drifting slightly with each other. And we're achieving this with various different techniques, in this case a flanger, and we also have the oscillator detunes and stacked on each other. Then I'm going to add a compressor here. We have this Fairchild compressor to thicken up the sound a little bit, and I'm going to increase the level of that to 120 something. And finally, I'm going to add some reverb. Nothing too insane, but just a little bit of character. So let's add a plate reverb at about one, one, 110 for the level. Make sure my levels are... So again, now we have a general ballpark of um, bagpipe sound. So we have the right envelope shape. We have the oscillators, which are set octaves apart. And then we have various techniques for adding a chorus type effect. In this case, we have a flanger and we're detuning the oscillators and stacking four of them per voice. And if you remember, the other component I mentioned is the way you play the bagpipes contributes a lot. So I'm not going to play... This, this is not the way a bagpipe would be played, so this kind of breaks the illusion. So the main thing you want is to pick a single note and somewhere lower in the register here and drone that. So you basically want to hold the same pitch throughout 
the whole time you're playing a melody and you don't want to be changing like bass lines because that'll break the illusion and for example you want to hold a drone like a b flat here The other technique you want is these kind of legato licks. Which you hear a lot in bagpipe type music. The scale is also important, so in this case if you... a Mixolydian scale is... Uh, appropriate. In this case I'm playing an A mixolydian. So in general you just want to drone a sound and then a couple octaves higher play your melodies with these legato licks and pick the right scale. And if you do it right, you can sort of create the illusion of the bagpipes, even if the sound is not perfectly emulating a bagpipe. With the combination of the effects, the general ball ballpark of the sound, and the melodies you play, you can get a pretty decent approximation. And then as mentioned, we have this pitch and tone mod of Oscillator 2, which greatly affects our timbre. So you can get different flavors of bagpipes. case where it sounds a little more like a regular synthesizer so you definitely want to kind of thin it up and bring it up here so with the combination of the oscillator sync and the pitch of oscillator 2 and this tone control which is sort of a pulse width modulation you can shape it into more of a bagpipe again you want to aim for something really high pitched and nasally and kind of wobbly The other thing you would hear if you listen to backpack music is sometimes the, the bass note kind of drifts pretty obviously in and out of pitch as it's kind of tuning up. And you can emulate this um, by assigning aftertouch, for example. I mean, you can assign pretty much any parameter, but I find aftertouch is handy because normally you would have both hands busy. So it's more handy to have something to use pressure here instead of moving for the mod wheel, for example. So what we're going to do is assign uh, aftertouch to control the drift in oscillator frequency. And in fact, we don't actually need the mod matrix for this because you have predefined aftertouch to pitch modulation in the oscillator parameters here. So all we have to do is go here and oscillator one params and we can increase the amount of aftertouch to pitch mod. And you can sort of tweak this by holding the aftertouch and simulating to see how much it'll drift. So that's extremes. So you want to find kind of a, a sweet spot by pressing down on the key really hard and then tweaking the sound to see, to get like a subtle range of tweaks of pitch control. So I find 77, for example, here is pretty decent. And the way you would play that is you would kind of randomly drift it in and out as you play it initially.
The other thing we can do is swap out the flanger for a chorus and see what kind of sounds we get there. That's basically it. It doesn't sound like a perfect bagpipe emulation, but I think with the combination of getting in the general ballpark and remembering the basic rules, which is oscillators, octaves apart, lots of stacking and unison detuning, as well as effects like chorus and reverb help a lot because you generally want that kind of wobbly, thick, rich, chorusy sound. And you want to aim for something super nasally, so very small uh, duty cycle on the pulse width. And some syncing and high pitch on oscillator 2 adds to that nasally sound. And then when you combine the general sound with the way you play it, you can approximate backpipes pretty well. Just remembering to play a pretty low droning note and never change the note here. Always keep the same bass note. And then just learn different tricks of how backpipes uh, work so lots of kind of these kinds of licks um, and then if you pick the right scales and listen to a lot of Scottish music you'll get a gist for at least approximating like a caricature of a bagpipe rather than a purely authentic bagpipe sound anyways hopefully that was, that was informational uh, if you want to see more videos like this be sure to subscribe and leave me a like down below if you like this kind of stuff so I know whether to make more of this type of content or something else. All right. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.